up, everybody? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. Another episode of Doggy Diamonds No Filter. Uh, on the screen right now, you can see who I have on the screen is Takashi69, Takashi, Daniel Hernandez, whatever his name is, uh, in confidential informant number, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, for the people that's listening on Spotify, for the people that's listening to iTunes that are listening, that don't watch this, which I prefer you to listen opposed to looking at it on YouTube. But, you know, whatever your format is, I'm trying to make it, you know, to where you can listen to it on all formats. But whatever you're listening to it on, I'm appreciative. But this is who's on the screen, Takashi 69 And um, I wanted to talk about him today. I'm not going to spend 48 thousand minutes on here talking about him but I do want to talk about the dark side of the streets that they don't really tell you about and the law and being arrested and going through the system and all that and you know how everything just looks you know you know great the end result look great the car the jewelries the women the money but it is not all good it's very very dark lonely and a very scary place for many people and that's why he did what he did and there's no justification for what he did but I believe many people would do it too because they just not built like that so for example um when you look at him like how he just came out of nowhere he was just there and then you start getting a little bit of his backstory you're looking at him like yo uh who is this kid? I'm from the, you know, I'm from the borough. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I seen a lot of the people that was around him. So I was like, okay, I know him. I know him. I know him. I know him. But I don't know who this kid is. He just appeared out of nowhere. And then it was like, I was happy. Not for him. I was kind of happy for them because now they finally have some way that they could earn some income and get some money with an artist. Now for me personally, an artist doesn't have to be real. That's just me personally. I just listen to the art. I listen to the music, whatever. Because many of these artists who you think are real goons, gangsters, and all of that, many of them aren't anyway. You know, straight up and down. I mean, you don't see battle rappers talk about shooting people with a knife. You know, so that don't make them not a good battler. That just means that you're not a street guy. And that's okay. I don't have an issue with that. I don't judge people on whether they're street or not. You know, that's like kind of immature to say, well, he's a gangster, he's street, he's this, he that. That's immature. And that mentality is what's ruining a lot of people because people are trying to prove that they're street and they're doing things that to prove that they're street. And then what comes with that, they can't handle it. And what comes with that is prison. What comes with that is fights. What comes with that is getting shot. What comes with that is many different things. And what comes with that is death. And many people can't handle all the stuff that comes with being a street person. So this kid come out of nowhere. And I always said, yo, his marketing is genius to me. Like, you know, if he sits down and plans all this stuff, his marketing promotion, yo, is genius. Like it is, is, it's, it's a plan. I'm not talking about the trolling. This is prior to the trolling. Just me seeing the whole play. I was like, yo, wow, this is deep. Like, yo, the way he put this all together is just crazy. Like you got, you know, it, it's very hard to have everybody talking about you at one time. It's hard to do that to where everybody is talking about you, where everybody is looking like, yo, you seen, you seen, and then your name is ringing all over, you know? And then it just so happens that when you hit play on the music, you like, yo, okay, it ain't, ain't really my thing. You know, it's not extremely whack. But it ain't my thing, but I could see why people like it. And then a lot of people are fronting now because of his actions, but people were listening to it and liking it. Because I remember walking around the borough and, and having cars pass me playing it. You know, and then he did collaborations with artists who so-called have street credibility. Some dudes was all in his video. They might be talking junk now, but they was in his videos and they were signing with him and they were standing with him at one point or another. So... When everything unfolded, prior to it unfolding, he uh, allegedly gets kidnapped and, and robbed and all that stuff like that. I guess he did because 
you know, it is what it is. People have got tried and convicted for it. I don't really know what happened. I wasn't there, but this is what, you know, he said happened to him. And I knew it was going to go all bad from there because now it's getting dangerous. Now, all the danger that comes with the territory of being the street guy with being the gang, gang, gang guy, now it hits home. Now it becomes dangerous. So once a crime is committed, then it was different crimes allegedly being committed. Now, what happens next? The fuzz is coming. Who's the fuzz? The boys. Who's the boys? You know who they are. Once they come, they sit back and watch everything unfold in the first place. They just sit back, they chill. You think you're doing stuff, you're getting away with it, but they sitting back watching. And they just building this situation up for when they want to come snatch you and everybody else. So many of y'all out there, you think you're doing stuff. Listen, they already know. It's just when they're going to come let you know, ah, right, yo, we know. And this is what we want from you. So are you really ready? Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared? Are you prepared for them to snatch you and snatch everybody? And then they say to you, yo, look, we know you ain't the big, we know you ain't the big cheese. We know you're not the boss of this whole operation, but this is what we willing to do to let you go. Oh, and this is why you should just give them up anyway, because they was going to do this to you and they already did this to you and they was doing that to you. What are you going to do? So now you start thinking all this. First, you was thinking, you know, death before dishonesty, death before death before dishonor. I'm trying to think of say two things at once. Death before dishonor. Uh, what's the other one that y'all like to say? Um, uh, death before dishonor. Uh, uh, damn, what's the other one? It's another one. Damn, I can't even think of it because they also damn stupid. And most people don't even live by it. But, um, yeah, death before dishonor, loyalty before royalty, and all these other, you know, that's the one I was thinking of. All these little cliches and these little sayings that look good on the shirt. They look good for the gram. They look good for Twitter. But not too many people really, really live by that. You know, so you have trained professionals, trained professionals who have been doing this for years for some of y'all longer than you have been born, that's going to come in a room and lay it all out for you and tell you why you should be disloyal and tell you that people have been, been people that you know personally, people that you've been around, people that they don't know, people that they never been around, they never broke bread with, they never ate with, they never drank with. They're going to come tell you why people that you know personally has been disloyal to you and why you should betray them because they was already betraying you. So what do you do? You go and give it all up. And that's exactly what he did. And I think many of y'all would do it. Now I know people are fronting. Gang, gang, gang. I never tell. I'm not a snitch. Well, are you willing to sit in a jail for 72 hours without food, without water, without using the bathroom? Many of you can't even go 10 minutes or an hour without a blunt. Many of you can't even go a day without eating your pills, without drinking your Hennessy, without having your yak, without talking to your shorty, without... Just standing outside doing absolutely nothing. Are you willing to give all that up? Because they're going to offer you all of that if you just tell on your man. Hey, right? It wasn't you. You're not the big guy. I mean, you front like you're the big guy to the world. But they're going to offer you all of this. And then they tell you, well, if you don't tell, you're going to get 70 years. Which they don't know how much time you're going to get because that's up to the prosecutor and the judge and the jury sometimes. The police and the FBI, whoever grabs you up, they have no idea how much time you're going to get or how much time you're facing. They have no idea. No idea. 
But they tell you this, and what you do, you get scared. But my thing is, don't get scared now, because when you was out there, and it was gang, 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 and it was death before dishonor, it was loyalty before royalty, and it was one for all, all for one, and all these things, you wasn't scared. You thought you was ready for all of this. You thought you was ready for everything. You thought you was ready for the ops, and you, you, had, you said it in your song. You said it on the gram. You know, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by. You said all these things. Now it's time for you to live it. Now you got to live it. Ain't no way out. But living what you said you was going to do. Ain't no way out. But they going to give you an out. And many of you going to take it. You know why? Because it's going to go through your mind when you got that moment of clarity, when you're not high. You can't get high. You sober as hell. You scared to death. You cold. You hungry. You tired. You thirsty. You ain't take a good dump in days. You got to pee. And you've been in this one spot and you're looking at these walls and you can't even think straight. And they're going to try to give you an out. And many of you are going to take that out. Because you don't want to be in this situation. Because you never put together that everything that you was involved with ends here. You think it ends in a mansion? You think it ends with jewelry? You think it ends with girls? You think it ends with money? And for some people it do. It don't end there. It goes through that. But it ends there. Now, Southwest T just came home from BMF. One of the most notorious stories that we've all seen, heard documentaries, uh, 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 all street tales. Ask them how, what happened. I'm pretty sure some people in their case folded. I ain't going to put nothing on nobody because I don't know for sure. I'm not, don't know all the information. I'm pretty sure some people folded. They had all the jury, all the cars, all the houses, all the girls. Then one day somebody came and got them and took everything away. Meets what he did. He was one of the bosses. He stood tall like the boss. Southwest T. Stood tall. He's one of the bosses. He didn't tell. But I'm pretty sure you had other people that said, yo, I ain't the boss. Yeah, I got some of the girls. I got some of the money. I drove some of the cars. I lived in some of the houses, but I ain't the boss. And they gave them out and they took it. And I'm saying all of this to y'all because many of y'all think y'all built for what's to come. And I'm telling you, you not. You not. You think you are. And you might even last for a little while. But the mental torture and the anguish that they put y'all through, many of y'all not mentally built for that because you lack discipline. Discipline is everything. When you enter this street life, you have to say, I'm willing to give everything up one day. And my only way out of this is when I leave willingly. But if I don't leave willingly, if I get murdered or if I go to jail forever, then so be it. That's the mentality you got to have. Not if they catch me, I'm telling on everybody. Not if somebody get at me, I'm telling. There is no telling. You signed up for it. It looked good when you was in the picture. You had every hand signal, every handshake. You had everything down pat. You got on your blog. You said what you'll do to people. You wrote on your gram. I'm going to spin the block. I'm going to do this. I got the Draco. I got the Extendo. You said all these things. But then I sit there and watch. Right in the hood, in the ville. Young black girls swing on cops. And the same dudes who got the Draco and who said they'll spin a block and all that stood there and watched while the cops 
whipped the little girl out, pulled her by her hair, threw her on the floor, and all they did was whip out their phone. I'm not telling you what to do, but you said you'll spin the block. You said you got the Draco. You said you'll do this, you'll do that. But when it's time to get busy, you didn't do it. Because that's the time to get busy. When it comes to protecting your women, that's when it's time to do it. But, oh, let me see. If somebody holler at your girl, then, you, then you'll get busy. But when the boys that's going to grab you later, that's eventually going to grab you for all of the, the madness that you're doing out here in, the, in these streets, you fold it. You're going to fold because you're already folded. This is your time to get busy. Look what you did. You folded. When this kid got arrested, it wasn't a doubt in my mind that he was going to tell. I mean, who didn't think that? He was never built for it. He was never built for it. You hear alarms and stuff going on. That's how real it is. He was never built for it. He was never built for the mental anguish that I know he went through when they sat him down. And they probably played him some tapes. They probably, He was like, oh, no, I'm telling on everybody, whatever y'all want. And they probably told him, listen, you give us this, you'll be out this time. You're going to get right back. He already had his contract. He already had everything lined up. But now, for the rest of his life, he got to kind of live off the grid, live off the land. He got to pop in and pop out. Or get pop. Or, you know, just always living in fear that somebody's going to do something to him. I wouldn't want to live like that. And then, you know, what's so crazy. We live in a society now, man. I, I'm going to be real with you. I think if people see him, they're going to take pictures with him. Because he ran a sympathy route in his live. Like I said, I didn't even watch. I wasn't one of the two million people in there. Just ain't my thing. But I seen the replay on YouTube of his explanation of why he did what he did. And he's going to get the sympathy vote from a lot of people. A lot of people was going to side with him. I already see people siding and understanding why he did what he did. So that opens the door for many people who's going to think they're justified in their actions. So they already said, yo, look, man, if this happened and, and, th and I get in this situation, I'm going to go his route. This is sad the way a lot of this is going to play out for a lot of people. Because he embraced that everybody's calling him a snitch and a rat. Embraced it. Got a big rat in the video. Got a cartoon with himself sitting on a mousetrap eating cheese. This is all a joke. This is a joke, but at what cost? Who is the joke on? Because in the end, the joke going to be on him. The joke going to be on him in the end. Because if all you got is money, cars, jewelry, and homes, but you can't even function in society the way you once was, then you are a prisoner. You still in jail. He's still in jail. He's still in jail. It's still prison. But I know many of you had a mentality. I'd rather be rich for a little while than to be broke forever. If you're bored in a house, bored in a house, boy, why not play with your balls? Our sponsor today, Manscaped, is here to make sure your balls are smooth while you or your partner are playing with them. Manscaped promotes clean hygiene when it comes to shaving your balls thanks to their lawn mower 3.0. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. While you are probably looking for new things to do at home, why not make manscaping part of your routine? Yo, I, for me personally, I'm going to use manscape. I'm going to, you know, get my, my, my act together down there. Get my act right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to use manscape for. You know, I don't know about you, but 
You can't be having that, you know, George W. Bush like that. You know, you got to have your joint groomed. But that's for me. But Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0. Precision engineering tools for your family jewels. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. Inside the Perfect Package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Preserver, the anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're probably sitting there on the couch with your hand in your balls anyway. Might as well keep them smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. Subscribe to the perfect package and get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivery to your door every three months. Making sure your trimmer always stays fresh and clean. For a limited time, subscribers get not one but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, a $39 value, and the patented high-performance anti-shaving Manscaped Boxer Briefs. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off of free shipping with the code DD101 at Manscaped.com. That's right, 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use my code DD101. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day. Thanks, Manscaped. And I'm saying all of this to y'all because this is all systematic. A lot of y'all young dudes is looking for an out. Y'all looking for a way to get on. And I see some people, we got to get on. We got to get a deal. You start hearing these stories of, yo, he was rapping for three months and then they came and signed him. And all I see is somebody rapping for three months and then the end result is they're in prison. Kodak Black, I look at Bobby um, Bobby and Rowdy, GS9, so many. I just look at how they're giving y'all little dudes everything and then taking it away from you. And when they give it to you, they hook you up with the jeweler. They hook you up with the real estate agent. They hook you up with the car dealer. They hook you up with the eight, the the agent, the booking agent, all these when they're all down together. So they find a way to give you the money to keep the money amongst their people to take it right back. All the people is down together and their deal is how can we get these kids money from them? What can we do? So they always you you always look like you connected. You always look, oh nah, my jeweler, my jeweler. That's what you say, my jeweler. Where did you meet your jeweler at? Did you know him before you had money? Or did somebody at the label refer him? Or did another rapper refer you to this jeweler because the label referred him to the jeweler because the labels got relationships with the jeweler because the labels rent jewelry for video shoots and photo shoots and all that so they know the jewelers. So then they hook you up with the jeweler or they bought you a, 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 a nice piece. For your signing or whatever. Then you're cool with you say my jeweler. But whose jeweler really is it? Who who's really the jeweler work for? Jewelers are work for hire. They gonna go to the highest bidder. You ain't got no more money than a record label. Ever. And it's not even your first dealing with the uh it's not even the jeweler's first dealing with most record labels. The jewelers probably owe the record label jewelry. And they might have bought you a piece and then recouped it from you. So it's so much going on and so much plays being made on you and you don't even know. But you so thirsty to get out the game. I mean, get out the streets. But you enter in the streets and trying to go legit in the game and it don't mix. It's a real dark side. Yo, even myself, right? When I was out there, I was hustling. I'm never going to act like I was big time or I was internationally known or even locally known for being this big time hustler. It was never my thing. I always did music my whole life. I dibbled and dabbled in things to fund certain things, but I never was no big time anything, period. Won't even front. But one thing that I didn't know, I mean, one thing that I never did is I had people around me 
that was around me every day, but I knew they was not built like that. And I always said, look, if anything happened, I'm going to take the fall. Yo, I'm just, yo, when they grab me, I don't know nothing. I didn't see nothing. That don't got nothing to do with me. Anything that got something to do with me, I did this, I did this, I did that. I don't know about nobody else. That's that. And I always put that in my mind and I always carried myself like that, even though I wasn't big time to where I knew they would grab me for some craziness. But anything that could have took place or I heard, I didn't let certain people know because I never was going to put them in a position to say anything because they don't know. Everything ain't for everybody. Everything ain't for the internet. I don't have to prove anything. I don't need validation from strangers. I did a podcast before. Keep trying to prove that you're tough. Y'all should listen to that. Because everybody got this whole macho thing. Everybody got this whole, I'm gangster. I'm this, I'm that. Yo, it's something that comes with that. I don't know if you're ready for it. I don't know if you want that. And it's so bad. The rules that apply to a certain life, they're gone. They're out the window. They don't even apply no more. So now it's like anything goes. You got people who would say something about your mother. So if somebody could say something about your mother, that means they'll do something to your mother. You got people disrespecting people, children on the internet, typing that. So if they disrespect your children on the internet, that means they can see your child and slap them. Are you ready for all of these things that come with this world? I'm not with none of it. So I keep myself away from it. I keep myself out of these situations and I keep others out of it because I wouldn't even give nobody the opportunity to tell on me because you don't know nothing about me. People don't even know where I live. We going to keep it like that. So when you get up and you broke and you sit there and you try to figure out, damn, how could I get on? You know, because you could put yourself on. You know, if everybody's around you and they really want you to win and they all for you, then y'all could pull a couple of dollars together the way y'all chipping for weed and liquor and all this other madness. Y'all could pull some money together and make some plays happen. But no, everybody want to act the part and live out the part. Instead of actually making it happen. And then all those things going to come. You want to front like you're doing it. Instead of actually doing it. Or struggling till you get to it. So you try to take the fast way. So now you out there hustling. You getting fast money. But you more of a custody than you are a damn boss. Because you don't have no money for nothing. All you have money for is for your vices. Your cigarettes. Your pills. Your weed and your liquor. So when it come time for you to pay for studio time, you try to haggle people. When it come time for you to get artwork done, you try to haggle people. When it come for you to get promotion for your product, you try to haggle people. You're always trying to find a way to get out of paying for stuff. But when it comes to getting high, you got the money for it. And then you fronting on social media. But now you hustling, you doing all these things, you in the streets, hard body, you trying to prove that you ain't no sucker to people who don't care. Because at the end of it all, all, all everybody going to do is say RIP to you or free you. Nobody really cares. You put out your music. People will ignore it. But they'll quick to put RIP to you or free you. When you do something that was impressive, when you do something that was like, yo, he went and he he hit the block up. He did this. He did that. They quick to yell all these things about you. But they not quick to support your craft and your music. You got to make a choice. Are you mentally strong enough to go sit before these trained professionals and be mentally tortured, sometimes physically tortured, 
to not talk, to not speak, to keep quiet. This kid wasn't ready. He ain't stand a chance. What they said, as soon as the FBI grabbed him, he cooperated. You got people like Alpo walking around who, listen, he ain't no sucker. He done laid the game down with that pistol. I'm pretty sure he done put hands on people. And he out here. He gave it up too. So it ain't about whether you weak and you soft. Because some of those people that you look at as the strongest and the biggest and the baddest, they're giving it up. And they're getting movies made about them. They're getting books written about them. They're getting celebrated. But then you have people on like a, 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 a crusade or a campaign to destroy these type of guys who snitch and tell. And I'd be like, yo, hold up. A snitch is... Very, very bad. But I'm not in that life. I've been told on before too. And I don't really care. At the end of it. I don't have no crusade against snitches or nothing like that. Because I don't care. I'm not in that life. My whole thing is I shouldn't have never been in a situation where I was committing crimes in the first place. I shouldn't have never been doing some of the stuff I was doing anyway. Not saying it's cool that somebody told on me. But... Yo, the consequence is jail. Jail always comes because somebody told on you. Seriously. Somebody always tell on you. I got told on for something I ain't even do. Dude sick to stand on me and everything, but I can't really call. I can't say, yo, you a snitch, you a rat and all that. Yo, man, people do what they do. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. They offer me a gang of jail time. Yo, I ain't do it. That's that. Straight up and down. And I'm not telling y'all who did it. I didn't do it. Straight up. So, y'all have to prove that I did it. I don't have to prove that I didn't do it by telling you who did. I ain't telling you nothing. You said it was me. I said it wasn't. And I'm saying in my mind the whole time, I know who did it, but I ain't telling y'all. I'm not telling y'all nothing. Go to the precinct. You got the right to remain silent. Well, I'm going to reserve that right because y'all not going to trick me straight up. I'm not going to trick me. Everything I say can and will be used against me in a court of law. So right there. All right. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know terms. I don't know what I should say or shouldn't say. So the best thing for me to do is just don't say nothing. Wait to get with a lawyer. I'm not saying nothing. And when I said I know who did it, meaning that with the things that I was accused of, I knew what they were accusing me of. And I know I didn't do it, but I know who did do. I wasn't even around. I wasn't even there. But I heard about it. But, yo, it wasn't me. I was the only one arrested, only one charged. I beat it, and that was that. Case closed. Matter of fact, I actually even, um, what, I, I took something called a, um, I think it's called an Alfred's plea, where you throw yourself on the mercy of the court, and then if you stay out of trouble, so you didn't say you did it. You didn't say you didn't do it. You throw yourself on the mercy of the court. And they gave me some stay out of trouble for six months. And um, it gets sealed or whatever. Whatever. But I'm the only one who got back. Hey, I wore something that I ain't have to wear because, yo, I ain't do it. But I was like, yo, I'm not telling on nobody. Because y'all lying. And even in many of these situations where you get grabbed, that they lying so much. Yo, y'all lying. And if you did do something, if you did order hits and you did do certain things, ain't no getting out of that. You was a criminal. You was a part of criminal act. Take take responsibility for what you did. Straight up and down. You ain't got to tell on nobody else. You don't got to turn states against nobody else. Nah, I did this and did that. All that other stuff, I don't know nothing about that. But yeah, I, I did this. What y'all got for me? When it come to him, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> 
You can't make me know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about. If I tell you, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you caught me on the tape? All right, so what you giving me for that? That's that. But all that, just, just telling on everybody so you could come back out and rap and do the same thing you was doing, coward. But a coward going to be a coward. When wasn't he a coward? Many of y'all are cowards. Look how you carry yourself. Look how you conduct yourself. So when coward stuff happen, I don't be surprised. I don't be like, yo, he went out like a sucker. I'm like, yo, he was a sucker before he went out. When wasn't he a sucker? Suckers do sucker stuff. So y'all all shot calling him a rat. He this, he that. Yo, dude is embracing it. He ain't saying he not. That's many dudes. But then again, people pick and choose who they want to put these titles on and who they want to so-called pick on. He deserves everything he getting, but so do many other people. It's heads of organizations right now that people are signed to, that they run in their mouth, but you sign to somebody who's a DEA agent. It's public record. So where's the same energy for that situation? Why is it so quiet? But why is that swept under the rug? Because we're going to get at one, we're going to get at everybody. If you feel that so strong about this person, feel that way about everybody. And that's the dark side that I'm telling you about. And what happens? You get you tell on people, right? You wear a wire, you do all these things, and now you one of the heads of a big corporation that everybody want to be down with. How did you lose? Everybody sweeping on the rug. Yeah, don't don't look at me. Go attack somebody else. You know how many of these rappers did I know for sure told on somebody? That I know for sure told on somebody? I got a laundry list. I just don't say nothing. I just be laughing because I'm like, damn. This is crazy. I'm not saying own it, but I'm just saying tell these kids, yo, the game is twisted. It's a real dark side to this fame. It's a real dark side to this. And again, you keep hearing it. But it's like it's getting passed over because it get glossed over because dudes get movies written about them. They get documentaries. They get all these things. And the so-called stand-up dudes, we hold them in high regards. But many of them are dead or in jail. So we, 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 we look at Wayne Perry, we look at Rich Porter, we look at Bobby Rowdy, we look at Meech, we look at Southwest T, we hold them in high regard, but they're in prison forever. Or, or um, you know, in some Rich Porter situation, he's deceased. And he gets so much love, everybody love it, you know, love him because he was a stand-up dude and all that, but then you call in the other dude a coward for killing him, but he got movies made about him. He got rewarded. So when you look at society and people doing anything for fame and fortune and attention, people want to be rewarded. So it's going, I, I, I predict, unfortunately, it's going to be more of this going on. It's going to become normal. It's going to become normal. It already was normal to me because you have people like in the mob who made this rule of, you know, don't tell and all that stuff. And they some of the biggest snitches. The mob, some of the biggest snitches. But they the ones who are trying to hold this so-called code up. But the code is conditional depending on who we talking about because... Alpo out here, why nobody ain't run down on him yet? I see a lot of people talking that, you know, this, that, and the third. He out here. Run up on him. Do what you got to do. 
It's like, get Takashi. That's hip hop. That's rap. He ain't, he ain't about nothing. He ain't going. He ain't going. He ain't even going to hit a fly with a fly swatter. Get that out on one of them. But you know, that's what it is, man. For the for the young dudes out here, yo, it ain't worth it. Seriously, it ain't worth it. I know it looked like it's worth it. I know y'all want to be famous. Y'all want bread. Y'all want all that. But yo, it really ain't worth it. You want to be scared for the rest of your life? You want to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your life? Think about it. I don't think. You want to be laid up like that? You want to be cuffed? You want to be in jail? You want to be scared in jail? Because everybody you done told on got power and strength in there and you weak. Many of y'all mad thin anyway. Y'all like 100 pounds, malnourished, bird chest. Y'all can't, y'all ain't even built for this. In no way. It ain't worth it. Ain't nothing wrong with having an education. There's nothing wrong with having a job. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not a coward. You're not a sucker. You're not lame. You are a real man. Taking care of yourself and your family. That's a man. Not somebody who's taking away from society and their community by putting poison and doing dirt in their community. Then when they get caught and they get trapped in the corner, they want to tell on everybody. That's a coward. Be a man. With that, I'm Doggy Diamonds. This is Doggy Diamonds, no filter, man. It's a real dark side to this fame that a lot of people ain't talking about. And for the rappers that keep talking about the bricks you got and what you selling and all of that, that's cool. I listen to it. I bump it. But some of y'all been in the game like 30, 40 years. Stop. Stop. It's over. Because y'all implanting something and indoctrinating something into these young dudes. And they going to tell. They going to tell. They ain't ready for this. But yo, I'm Doggy Diamonds. I'm out of here until next time. Peace. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the Spotify. Make sure you subscribe to the iTunes. I'm out of here. Peace. Make sure you uh, click subscribe, youtube.com slash doggy diamonds TV. Until next time, peace.